Good morning everybody and welcome to uh, today's virtual open morning. Uh, sun's shining today which is a, always a nice sight to see. Um, so we'll be on here until 12pm live today and we'll be guiding you around the NHC, seeing the facilities, um, chatting to you about the 12 week residential course, uh, meeting some of the horses um, and just, um, just showing you behind the scenes at the NHC really. And if anybody wants to ask any questions as we go along, feel free to pop them in the comments and we'll either answer them live or we'll send you links um, in the comments after the event's finished. But please feel free to ask any questions you wish at all. So the learners are just getting ready to head out uh, for their second lot this morning. So we'll leave them to be tacking up and we'll just meet some of the horses as we're going round. So a few that are watching, they may, if you've come through the NHC, you may be familiar with some of the horses that are here. Or you might have um, followed them in their racing career. So this one here is Ralph. Um, he's, he's quite a firm favourite for some, some learners. He's your favourite, is he? <laughs> We've got Gamester Boy here, having a bit of chill time. Nope. We've got Stuart here, <laughs> with his unhappy face. <laughs> uh, Stuart was, um, his racing name actually was Stuart, and he's, he was trained by Nigel Tinkler. So if anyone watching may have seen him in his racing career. So a few of the horses are enjoying a bit of time outside today. Like I say, the sun's shining, so it's quite nice for them to spend a bit of time outside. This is one of the greys here at the college. This is Taste the Wine, who's too busy eating to say hello. This one's Boris. He's a, a new recruit, I believe, relatively new. And we'll chat to some of the learners as we go around um, about the different temperaments, personality of the horses, which are their favourites, etc. So this morning we'll be talking all about the 12-week um, residential foundation course. So that's the main course that we do here at the NHC and this is what these learners are currently undertaking. So as it says, um, it is a 12-week course. So the learners will live here on the college for 12 weeks um, and it is available for anybody that's age 16 or over. There's no age limit as such, as long as you're capable of working with, with horses. Um, and we do have a rider and non-rider option as well. So most learners do prefer the riding option, but we do also have a non-rider option that a lot of learners do undertake as well. So there's actually no um, requirement to apply for the residential foundation course. So whether you've touched a horse, ridden a horse all your life, or you've never touched a horse before at all, um, anyone can apply for the course. And whether whether you've had experience or not with horses, um, the, the outcome will be the same. You'll still get the same um, qualification if you complete the course, and it will be 12 weeks for everybody. So there may be some people watching as well that are currently working in the racing industry um, and they just want to increase their knowledge and skills. Maybe they, they're currently working as a non-rider and they'd like to work, um, they'd like to start riding racehorses. There is an option for, um, for those learners to do a shorter course, but that is, um, that does depend on the individual. So if, if you're watching this and, and you do work in racing and you'd like to improve your skills and knowledge of racing, then just get in contact with us and we can have a chat about the best course for you. Mm -hmm. 
So there's a question um, on here uh, from Kane. Can you apply when you're 15? Yes, you can absolutely apply. Um, you know, as well in advance as you wish. If you're keen to start, then send us an online application form. Just make us aware of, of when you finish school, um, of when you'll be able to start by. And as soon as you're 16, when you start, that's absolutely fine. But yeah, get your applications in um, and get your course um, get your course date secured. So there's a question here, um, if you have no writing experience, is there different groups depending on experience? So when the learners arrive, um, so every learner will arrive on the Sunday, and on the Tuesday they have uh, an initial riding assessment. So during that assessment, our training instructors will be able to see um, the skills that you've got for riding, whether you've ridden before or not ridden before, everybody will have a riding assessment. And during that time, the instructors will be able to um, to see which subgroup that you will you will, you can go into within that group, um, depending on on your riding skills. So everybody will um, will be riding as a group as such, um, but it will all be down to the initial riding assessment that you do a few days after you arrive for the course. So we'll move on to a few others that are getting ready. So you're riding TJ today? Yeah. Yeah. Do you? Have you ridden him much then? Yeah, like, apart from yesterday, the last, like, five or six days. Oh, have you? Yeah. You like, really get on with him? A lot of people say they don't get on with him, but all of them. <laughs> And you're heading out and he's got his own temperament and that. <laughs> yeah. You just take to him. Yeah. Yeah. Well everyone has their favourites, don't they? It, yeah. You're definitely your favourite. So the um, the morning routine that, that the learners do here, um, you can see tacking up, etc. This replicates a, um, a racing yard. So what they do in a racing yard. So it is early mornings. Um, you know they have to work fast but correctly. So ensure that all the tacks put on correctly. Um, but it does replicate what's done in a racing yard. So that when the learners do head out into the workplace. Um, there's no surprises for them. They're aware of exactly how they need to work um, and keep up with with all the staff that are, have, have been working and racing for years. So a question from Millie, are they off on the gallops? Uh, yes, we're heading out onto the gallops to watch them out there. And there'll also be a bit of lunging going on as well. Um, so we'll be able to watch a few things this morning, but yeah, the main thing we'll be doing is watching them on the gallops. So for anybody that's watching that's not familiar with um, the tack that's that's used in racing, um, you'll see here um, the cells that we use. Um, bridles, depending on what the horses need, the bits, um, etc., may may vary, but it's generally what you call a snaffle bit. Um, and the the saddles aren't what you'd be used to if you're if you're used to the generic way of riding. As you can see, they're what's called a half tree saddle. They fit any horse, and um, we also have safety stirrups as well, so you can see. The bend on them there you'll be able to see them when when the, uh, the stirrups are pulled down but it is slightly different if if you used to ride in a horse in the generic way so a question from Kane what are the limits for weight to go on the course um, so if you want to be a rider on the course wearing your full riding gear you need to be a maximum of 11 stone so that's around 10 and a half stone without your riding gear. 
Um, if you do exceed the weight and you still want to do the course, that's absolutely fine. You can just become a, a non-rider. So you do all the activities that the riders do, obviously except for the actual riding. So you still get to tack up, um, you get to lunge, you get to um, assist with the vet, assist with the farrier, um, the daily care of the horses, etc. So there's a lot that non-riders can do. Um, it's just not the actual riding, that's all. Uh, so a question from Jasmine, how many weeks have these learners been there? Um, so it varies for some of these learners. So we have a course start every six weeks. Um, our, the college is open 365 days of the year, even including Christmas and New Year. Um, but a course to start every six weeks. So there's a variation of um, of learners and how far along the course they are. So just touching on the riders and non-riders as well, um, you can start the course as a rider or a non-rider and progress. Um, if you want to become a rider um, and your weight's uh, the right weight to become a rider, you can. Um, or vice versa, if you start as a rider but it's maybe not for you, you can become a non-rider. So it's, it's down to the individual and um, what you prefer because heading out into the workplace, we want to make sure that you're comfortable with, with what you're doing. So you're riding Boris today? Yeah. <laughs> Do you ride Boris much? Yeah, I've been on him all week, so... Oh, have you? each other now. Do you like riding him? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll head out and have a look at a few of the, the other barns where the learners are getting ready. So there's actually three barns here at the NHC. Um, one's the mare and pony barn and then we have the two bottom barns that one that i'm in now so this barn over here has a few a few more horses that are a little bit more tricky to deal with in the stable um all the horses here are graded so whether they're ridden or on the floor they're all graded to make sure that the learners are working comfortably with the horses so when learners start they will start with working with the lower graded horses ones that are a little bit more easier to deal with and then progress on to the ones that are a little bit more trickier um, to handle or deal with in the stable so who are you riding today oh, it's a... do you enjoy riding him oh did you okay so you're still getting to grips with him yeah, he's quite strong. He leans on you a lot. So oh, does he? I'm getting used to him. Makes you stronger, helps your fitness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you head out onto the gallops or in the yeah, indoor gallops. today? In the gallops. Yeah. Well, we'll be seeing you out there then. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Doing a bit. So this one's Axiom. Who's coming to say hello? So there's a few more just getting tacked up in here, ready to head out. Who's this you're riding today? This is just playful. He's my favourite ride. Oh, is he? Yeah. I love you riding your favourites at the minute. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ridden him much whilst you've been here? Yeah, quite a lot. Um, I rode him yesterday as well. Oh, okay. Um, but he's really nice, he's really calm. Yeah. He's really and he's a good boy. Oh, that's good. Are you heading out onto the gallops yeah. indoor today? Yeah. Fantastic. Right, we'll leave you to get ready. <laughs> so you can see a lot of horses are having a bit of downtime at the minute. Some of them have been ridden for first lot. Um, so if you're unaware of what a lot means, um, we call a lot basically the uh, the group that's riding. So if you come here and you hear that, 
that you ride on first lot, second lot, that just means the first ride or the second ride of the day. Who are you riding today then? Got Doug today. You got Doug. Ridden him quite a bit, he's quite he's a nice lad. A bit funny in the stable, but he's nice. Ah, that's I good. Enjoy. That's good. Are you in the indoor today? Yeah, in the indoor. Indoor. Bam. Indoor. Oh, third week, so we're progressing slowly, but we're getting there. That's good. Fantastic. It's all about... It's all about progression. Yeah, exactly. That's the main thing. Doing it slowly, get your confidence up. And exactly. Fantastic. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Exactly, yeah. So what's your experience been before you arrived then? Uh, I worked, I did the six month course at the National Stud. Okay. The flavour course. Yeah. And then I worked for Hayeswood Bloodstock and Newmarket and did a year in Texas. Right, okay. Until January, so probably a couple of weeks before the course, actually. A couple of weeks before this course. Right, okay. So like bang straight into it. Yeah, yeah. So you've got quite a lot of knowledge within the racing industry prior yeah. to coming here then. So is it just the riding side that you wanted to? Yeah, okay, yeah. I always thought it would be too cool, but give me opportunity and my weight is fine. So yeah, fantastic. That's the, that's the main thing. And yeah, so I'm comfortable with horses and stud, stud side, but yeah. it's always been the riding I've wanted to do for a long time. Yeah, exactly. The edit sheet gives you the chance to do that. Mm. So what's kind of your ambitions are moving forward? What would you like work to do? Rider. Just work rider, yeah. Work rider and see what opportunities arise. Yeah, yeah. Set my, set my sights on anything too. Yeah, just see how it goes. Yeah, you know, there's so many avenues in this industry you can go to. Yeah, exactly. That's why, that's why yeah. I came here. Yeah, so perfect. Contact, so. Yeah, Hopefully. exactly. We'll get someone. Yeah, we'll be seeing you out and about, Definitely, I'm sure. Yeah. Down to Newmarket, maybe. Definitely, yeah. Perfect. So if you want to get back out there. Yeah. It's, it's flying through the course already, man. It's flying for all these few weeks. Yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Fab, well, we'll be watching your progress over the next few weeks anyway. Yeah. So. Fab, right, I'll let you get on with it. So Cheers. they're all pulling out, but thank you for that. Right. Dark Ruler's having a bit of a a snooze this morning, not phased by what's going on everywhere else. Right, so there's a few that have um have pulled out ready to ride. Some of them are lunging, so we'll just go and see see them this morning. So we have a variation this morning. Some are riding on the gallops, some are riding in the indoor school, and some are heading out for lunging, I believe. We'll be able to catch up with them later, the ones that are, um, are lunging, because that's something that non-riders do whilst they're here. Um, so it's good to see what a variation of things that non-riders can do. So we'll just get out of the sun just so it's... You can see a little bit more, put the sun behind us. So when learners begin um, begin their course as a rider, they'll actually start in, in the indoor school until their confidence is gained. That's when they'll head out onto the, um, out into the gallops. So those that start, regardless of your previous riding experience, you won't just head straight out, out onto the gallops. So we make sure your confidence and your skills are are improved um, and the training instructors feel that you're ready to head out onto the gallops before you do. So these guys are heading out onto the gallop, so we'll be following these ones down. So we'll pass a few of the facilities on our way, um, but on the way back we'll actually be able to, to have a look at them properly. A few areas that we can't go in yet still due to Covid regulations um, and making sure the staff and the, the learners are kept safe is a residential block. So it's we're not able to 
head into there today. But if you want to look back on our previous open mornings, they're available on our Facebook page or YouTube page. Um, you can actually see the residential block in there. So like I say, it's just to, to keep the learners that live here on site, keep them safe whilst they're here. So it's a little bit of a walk up to the gallops, but it's good as it does warm the horses up a bit if they've been stabled. And there's the training instructor that's with this group today. That's Marie that's in the Jeep there. That's who we'll be joining shortly on the gallops. We'll be able to watch them go around. So I believe that most people watching will be interested in the 12 week residential foundation course. But if there's any other courses that anybody wants us to chat about, please let us know and we'll, we'll have a, a chat about them um, and see what options are available here. So this is the outdoor arena that the learners that are currently lunging are in. We will head back here and watch these shortly once we've finished on the gallops. The four learners ahead of us. So a lot of people ask um, about the cost of the course as well. So the cost of the, the course for the full 12 weeks is £350. Um, so that's, like I say, for the full 12 weeks, includes your accommodation, um, your meals, all three meals a day, and the tuition. The tuition is actually free, but that cost actually covers uh, the learners living here for 12 weeks. There is also a refundable £50 deposit as well for the room um, but learners will get that back on when they leave the course once the room's left in in the same state that it was was found in and we do also have bursaries available for those with a household income of £23,000 or less um, so if that's something that you're interested in applying for please let us know and we'll just send the forms over to you It's nice to see everywhere drying up and <laughs> no more rain, let's hope not. Not forecast rain for a week, huh? That's good. So if anyone has any questions at all whilst we're going round, please ask them in the, the comments section and we can answer them live for you. So all the horses that we have on site here, which is roughly around around 40, just over 40, I believe, um, they have all had a racing career. So they all know know the game. And they do vary in, in age as well. We have some that are a little bit younger, um, and some that have, you know, very, they're very re retired as such. You know, getting on for late teens.
So you can see I had a visit to the um, to the round gallop. You can see a few of the furlong markers around. It's actually just short of a mile round here. Seven furlongs, and there's eight furlongs in a mile. So it's just short of a mile. So they do two laps of trot to start with to warm up, and then they'll canter around a lap, just over a lap. So we'll be hopping in the Jeep with Marie, so we'll be able to see the learners as they're going around. So all of the learners actually wear um, an earpiece as well, so the training instructor that's in the Jeep can can talk to them, give them any advice um, and help them along the way whilst they're, whilst they're riding. So, Mar so Marie, this group of horses here then, are they... Um, I was gonna say, are they quite, are they quite, um, you know, low graded ones? Um, they are. They're all four level one horses, but as you've just seen, they're not donkeys. Yeah. Um, so they're all relatively quiet horses. These, um, like I said earlier, that all the horses are graded. Yeah, so the the learners all also have to have the you know the wits about them. Make sure they're just because they're not leading the string doesn't mean that they're not. They have to switch off. Damon Dawitsi, yeah. So Marie, at this stage of these learners' uh, journeys and, and at the foundation course, what are you expected to see from them? The main thing that we're aiming for is control. Yeah. So we, although we're on the gallops, we don't want to see them galloping. If they gallop, we've got a problem. Mm -hmm. So we try and encourage them to remain in control, keep the horses balanced, you know, nice steady pace. Obviously we're working on their position and technique as well. They won't be at their fittest yet, which is why they've done these horses. We've got another sort of three weeks to go. We'd like to think in the next two weeks their fitness will improve and they would move on to some of the more keener horses. Yeah. Um, but yeah, at this stage, it's really about them being secure and I'd say the control. Just really just building on their confidence so that they feel confident enough when you step up to some of the level two horses. Yeah. 
So how do you decide what's a level one or level two course? Base it on the keenness, the keenness, how reactive they are. So like I say with Ralph, he will fall and try and kick the rails, but he's doing it more to kick the rails rather than to get the rider off. And so he, you know, he doesn't want to jinx it, but he very rarely will actually throw someone off. Some of the sort of higher level horses will, you know, go and put their heads down and have a bit of a point of rock pose, especially on the set up. Or they might whip round on set up and they were just that little bit sharper and just demand that little bit more assertiveness from the rider, which early on in the course the kids haven't got it. They have to learn to develop that and the feel for the horses. And it's funny because you've got Twinkle at the front and if she's like she's 99% of the time, she'll be an absolute angel and she'll need a really good string and she'll be dead, dead quiet, she won't be driving up, she won't walk, she'll just need a really consistent pace. Yet if you put her behind, she's going to be a different pet the fish. She'll have her only between her legs, she'll be bumping, she'll be really keen and on the bridle. But then you've got Damien in second, and if you put him in front, he won't go. <laughs> so they all have their own little sort of preferences as to where they want to be in the string. We put Ralph, he's always at the back of the string because of the fact he kicks out the yeah. rails just because you wouldn't want to miss someone getting too close to him and go for the rails and accidentally get another horse. Yeah. So we do have sort of strategies for each one as to where they go in the string and their reasons for going there. So in terms of the graded as well, obviously they're graded in the stable. How? So Damien is relatively quiet out here, yet in the stable he's one of the trickier characters. And so their different quirks and personalities don't they and that's what um, prepares these learners ready for the workplace because you know they don't know the horses that they're heading out to and they've got to make sure that they're you know, approaching them correctly and dealing with them correctly. Place, you know, you're dealing with yearlings or two year olds. Yeah, they're going to be twice as sharp as these old boys. Yeah. So is this group going to be cantering as one group? Yeah. They can't, yeah, they are. Yeah. So are these all, all these riders are you know similar ability? Yeah, yeah. I would say any one of these four riders can ride any one of those four horses. Yeah. And how far are these into the course? Week eight. Week eight. Yeah. Yeah. 
So you feel that they're all on track for yeah, heading out into the workplace for a month's time? Just need to, like I say, it's more the fitness side of it now. We can work on, can work on the positioning first lot in the school and stuff. But there's a big difference from being able to do standing canter for a few laps in the indoor school and holding it for nearly a mile out here. Right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. These horses are quite a lot. You know, the, the thing is, these horses come out here day in, day out. Yeah. Every day of the year. So when these learners first come out here, these horses are a lot fitter than the learners. Yeah. So you generally find that the first week out here in particular, they're like, you'll get to sort of around here when they're cantering, it's just, that's, this is where the kids will get tired. Yeah. And that's when the horses can sometimes just pick the bridle up a little bit and just test them a little bit. But it's amazing what sort of three or four days out here does for their fitness. Yeah. You know, where they might struggle on the Monday, come the Friday, they're not blowing at all. Yeah, exactly. So that's where fitness, you know, comes into it. And I know we do hammer fitness into those that start in the courses, but it is so important. You know, even now, trusted round for two laps. Yeah. It is harder than it looks. And obviously these, these guys are used to it now for eight weeks of trusting. Um, but it is quite hard work for them to, to be doing this. We've just got a bit of a um, a rail mal malfunction. We're just popping it back in, then we'll we'll catch back up with the guys. So they'll they'll shortly be coming back to walk, popping their stirrups up, and that's when they'll uh, do their canter. So you can see them all putting their stirrups up now so they have to um they have to make sure that they keep their foot in the stirrup whilst they're putting the stirrups up as well he just does that you don't want to grab him up too short he's a little bit numb who else have you ridden out here i don't know Gibson, Raul, twinkles and him now right so he will be a lot number than those yeah he will lean on you a little bit i ridden tommy but he ran off with me oh that's nice um <laughs> He wouldn't be as keen as Tommy, okay. but the important thing is that you don't grab him up too short because it will pull you forward, you know, because your arms are short. Yeah. We've had this discussion before. Yeah. You need to be able to get your weight back and just sit against him and just hold him. Okay. Don't be alarmed though if he starts doing this nervous twitch with his head, especially when the sun's out. Yeah. He's quite sensitive to sunlight, so he might do that, but yeah. that's just him. Okay. You're not going to stop it, you've just got to deal with it. Okay. But obviously you don't want to have your head so low that so if you does chuck it up it's going to smack you in the face so that's another reason i don't want you to get that rain too short i mean obviously you need a contact yeah but you need a contact that's safe enough but it also allows you to just so would that be all right yeah 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 okay. i'd go up another two holly Nothing. Um, I would be reluctant to ride him that short. What? I wouldn't ride him that short. It's not that bad. I would ride him in that box like he does that short. Yeah. I'd go down a couple.
that's when you'll get keen. So obviously don't be round to Damien's bottom. You just keep sort of two to three lengths off him and then he'll settle for you. But if you try and add him sort of five, six lengths, you'll mess your life with really hard work. Maybe give Damien a little bit more room just in case he has a swish in the tail. You don't want Darwitz to react to that. And Dylan, while we walk, if you just give Jess a little bit of room, because if Joel gets too close to Darwitz, so that will just lighten him up a little bit. And again, I want you all in the middle of the gallop. So don't be hugging the rail, keep them in the middle. That's good, Dylan. So your distances as you are now in the walk are absolutely spot on. So if we can aim to keep those when we go into trot and then into canter, you make me happy. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, we all settled guys, we all ready to rock? All happy to go, yeah? Okay, right then, let's get trotting forward then. Here just a little bit more contact. Okay, Molly, when you're ready. Okay, Kara. Remember, keep his neck straight, Dylan. So if he starts curling his head towards the left, just use your right and straight to him. Watch your distances, guys. Molly, you could just go on half the stride. That's it, just to help Darwitz and Ralph at the back. So they just like to go on that little bit more forward. That's it, he does. Here, we don't get any more detached than that. You've got good contact, good position. Just watch your distance, Jess. Your distance is crap here, but it's going to be good. Talk to them, guys. They're all settling. Unless you don't want to be grabbing your reins any shorter than that. Marie, what Sorry. what are you looking for then whilst these right whilst they're cantering around here at this stage? Um, I want them to be safe distances. Yeah. We're coming into what we call the dip now. So in fact, let me just just guys, just be aware you're coming into the dip. So just maybe get a little squeeze down the rein. They're all really settled, but don't be complacent. So yeah, I want safe distances. I want to see them relaxing the horses, being like I said earlier in control. I'm quite really happy with this pace. Yep. Um, I'm really happy to how settled that horse is at the back, so he's obviously doing that a really nice ride, but by now it usually would have kicked at least three rails off. <laughs> um, so it's nice that they're all, you know, settling and relaxing. And you could almost say that they're going a bit too steady and a bit too relaxed, but I'd rather them be like this than the other way, because the kids will have a nice ride round. Yeah, okay. Um, looking at their position, so like Holly at the front, I'm going to instruct her, maybe just going to get the knee back and hips across the back of the saddle a bit more. so they don't get handy. Yeah. Um, obviously the key for any of them is that they've got good contact when they set off, so it's no point them setting them off into canter and then realising they've got to shorten the reins. Yeah. They all did a really good job, they all set them off with a nice contact, which meant we had a nice calm set off into the canter, which then led to the string being quite relaxed. Yeah. Generally, carnage happens at the start, it lights the horses up and then they'll be keen all the way round. But for these four horses, this is a really good string. It's all about just relaxing with them, yeah, you know, definitely. even if you're a bit panicky inside of riding, you've just got to relax and yeah. you'll enjoy it better. So obviously using their voice as well. Um, yeah. Thoroughbreds from a, from day one, they're used to, they're used to voices, aren't they? You know, um, doing really well, guys. Keep going. I'm just not talking because you're doing a good job today. I'm not abandoning you. You're doing a really good job, guys. So they're used to voices, so the learner's talking to them as they go round. Yeah. That just helps settle the horses as well. It does, yeah. And like I said to them earlier, talking as well, make sure they keep breathing. Yeah. You'd be surprised how many people like, hold their breath and yeah. they end up blowing, not because they're really unfit, but because they've held their breath. Yeah. Just, 
Okay, well just don't stand up. That's it, just drop your hips back. You're holding him fine, just don't go into policeman mode now. See, that's what I mean about him twitching. It's just a bit special for girls. You have to sit down, haven't it? Okay, just keep your eyes up, you're a bit close to twinkles. Just get a little pull down the rein. Can you see at all? Okay, you're going to have to uh, trust me then, aren't you, my dear? Good girl, you did a really good job. Right, your distance is fine now. Just sit some more there. gallop so that if they do whip you can all be keep walking that's it go on don't let them just stop and dictate anything now so get to the left rail towards me and then when we turn we know we're only going right it's not a 50 50 or phone a friend that's a good just okay after three we're all going to turn in unison one two three everybody turn super right give them some rain give them a pat well done guys drop your stirrups down Loosen your girth to hold. I mean, from my point of view, that couldn't really have gone much better. Okay. Um, so, for the stage in their yeah, course, so that, then, yeah, exactly, that's, the stage, that's yeah, where you'd really expect them to be. Yeah. yeah. So what riding experience did these learners have before they arrived here, Marie? So, Holly, they'd all, they all had experience, all four of these. Okay. Um, but not race style. Okay. So, just basic riding school or show jumping or eventing. Okay. So it's this new stride riding okay. the stirrups up that's is new for them. Yeah. Um, I would say they were all quite established riders. Jess, the girl here in the maroon body protector, she was here with us before she had quite a nasty fall out here. So actually I smashed one of her teeth out. Yeah. Um, she just fell all quickly. It wasn't the horse's fault. She just fell out here. So I actually see her out here riding this confidence. So yeah. she's going to be back shorter yesterday though yeah yeah so you had your, your rain contacts everything with him that's why i didn't i thought at one bit you looked like you might have gone to grab him a bit shorter and that would have not helped you so that's why i said just trust yourself and you were you were good with what you had yeah good he gets a pat for his efforts <laughs> how was he kira I've seen you definitely, but do you know you were relaxed? It makes so much difference. And you know, you consider you've not ridden him before, to see you that relaxed, you gave me a bit of a shock. It's not normal for me, like, to ride. No! <laughs> but that shows that you're getting more confidence in your ability. Yeah. You know, the more your confidence comes, the more relaxed you'll ride and the more settled they'll be for you. And, and it's that roller coaster well, effect. Normally I get a bit around this bottom, and that's as he It was, and your distance off Twinkle was spot on. But I think because you were relaxed, he was relaxed, he didn't really pull at all. No, he didn't. So that's why you probably didn't get so tired, because yeah. he didn't really take you on. Yeah. But don't be um, deceived by that. If you ride him again on Monday, because he can come out keener than that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but the key was, again, you had a good contact before you set off. Your distance was spot on. Jess gave you plenty of room behind you, and it all just went really nicely. Yeah. So well done. Right, like Holly? Yeah. She looked like she was going to sleep at some points. I know, she, she wasn't as cold as yesterday. No, it's just. Was what was yeah, it's good. I'd prefer to see her like that than see her tense and fighting. Yeah. But just be aware when you're leading, when she does drop off the bridle, you need to just keep her going forward so that the others don't stack up behind you. Yeah. But just have that little bit of awareness of when, yeah, it's nice that she's relaxed and it's nice that she's steady rather than pulling your arms out. But you, you have still got a responsibility to keep a rhythm, a consistent rhythm and momentum for the three behind you. Yeah. But well done, good effort. All right, Dylan. Yeah? He was really good, wasn't he? No, I like it. I like boring Ralph. 
at least he's settled and relaxed though. I'd rather see him like that than when he's on a bad day. But yeah, I think you're ready to step up a bit, aren't you? Give you a bit more of a challenge. So these guys will now um, sort of run their stirrups up, ease their girths and get off their horses and lead them back to the stable yard. It's hard to believe this morning when we uh, set out at half past six and fed the horses that it was uh, freezing and about got to about plus one degree at seven o'clock. It's lovely and warm now here in the sun. The students are always rather chatty after they've uh, cantered on the gallops. Um, I think it's uh, sometimes beforehand they're a little bit quiet, uh, thinking about what's uh, about to happen, but they're uh, much more relaxed afterwards and uh, chat amongst themselves and chat about how their, their ride's gone. You happy with dealing with how that's gone? Yeah. yeah, pleased with your riding this morning? It's been okay. Room for improvement still. <laughs> Make sure Ralph's at the back when we're leading, guys. Let's have Twinkle lead. Just be Twink. Like, you need to get off. Yeah. Start it now. That's him all smiling there, all happy. Yeah, they are all, yeah. I think it's the sunshine. <laughs> Marie was just saying, you know, she hasn't been here all week and to see the difference in them in a week, they've come on leaps and bounds. Yeah. And they progress and even in just a week. And as Marie touched on in the in the Jeep, it's a lot of it is down to their fitness. Yeah, exactly. You know, as the, as the learners get fitter, their their riding comes on. They can do more. They can be challenged more. Mm. We'll be catching up with um, Lee Vickers soon about fitness as well. So we'll catch up on the racing simulators and chat to him um, and see why fitness is so important in racing. Yeah, we can't overemphasize the fitness side of things. You know, the fitter the learners arrive at the start of the foundation course, um, the, the, the quicker they will progress. Yeah. Um, often when they think they're fit, and they arrive here and they realize they're not as fit as they thought they were. Yeah. Um, you know, these learners here this morning, they started on the yards at half past six this morning. You know, they're up having their first breakfast at six o'clock, sort of cereal, toast, coffee, tea, um, on the yards at half past six to feed. Once the horses are fed, they give them 10, 15 minutes of peace and quiet, let the horses eat. Um, the learners will then go and get a drink themselves. Back on the yards at seven o'clock, um, allocated their horses to muck out, and they uh, muck out and get tacked up their first horse by eight o'clock. Yeah. Um, so everything is done at, at pace. Obviously throughout the course, the learners do quicken up. Uh, to begin with, especially if somebody's never mucked a stable out before, you know, they'll find uh, one stable is, is a lot to do in one hour. Um, yeah, exactly. But as the course progresses, you know, they'll move up to sort of mucking out two horses, 
possibly onto three horses. Um, but obviously they are given the time to get quicker. Yeah, exactly. Um, and and then, then it's very much about riding throughout the course of the morning and working with the horses on the ground. The practical um, side of it. Yeah. Yeah, because you know, most learners do do this because they prefer the practical side of it and it is about 80% practical. Um, there is a little bit of work in, in classrooms, in the library, etc. in the afternoons, um, especially those that need to complete their functional skills if they haven't achieved a level four or above in English and maths before they arrive. So that's something that will be done in the afternoons. But like you say, Zoe, it's, you know, mornings is all about riding, uh, mucking out. It's all physically demanding. Yeah, they're on their feet until, you know, they have a, a, a breakfast at some nine o'clock, quarter past nine, uh, which is half an hour, and it's a cooked breakfast. So uh, breakfast number two is rather uh, rather nice. <laughs> um, and then they carry on riding throughout the morning, finish the horses up, tidy, you know, the stable yards, put everywhere, make everywhere neat and tidy. Um, and then they go for their lunch at around about one o'clock time. Yeah. And it's an hour for lunch, and then back on the, sta you know, on the yards for evening stables or for a lecture or the classroom. Um, at two o'clock, so long days, mm. physically demanding, um, yeah. but very rewarding. Essentially, they're, they're in 12 weeks doing what to other colleges would take a year to, to, to complete. Yeah, so it's a very um, intensive course, but um, it, it proves that you know after 12 weeks, the learners are ready for the workplace. You know, they're ready to for the full-time employment in the in the racing yard. Obviously, when they leave here, if they successfully complete the foundation course they will go on to a six week um, work placement with a racehorse trainer so that's the natural progression for learners once they've completed the foundation course and the location of the work placement will be determined by both the training manager and the learner themselves so making sure they're in a suitable workplace whether that be a, a you know a big a big yard a smaller family run yard um, flat, flat yard, national hunt yard, it all depends on the individuals. So that's something that's determined by both the learner and the training manager um, towards the end of the course here. And then they go out onto six week work placement. Yeah, and that placement will hopefully lead on to a permanent full time position with that uh, employer, that racehorse trainer. And the learner's going on to a level two apprenticeship, which yeah. is again all done in the workplace with our team of roving tutors visiting the students at their place of work to complete their qualification with uh, the opportunity to come back to the college uh, to do their endpoint assessment, which is a day here at the end of the qualification. Yes, exactly. And there's also the opportunities for the level three and level four apprenticeship. So yeah, there's a lot of different opportunities um, for you to progress with, with the learning in the racing industry. So just ahead of us, you can see um, some of the non-riders that are lunging. So we'll be able to head in there in a minute and catch up with Claire, who's the senior training instructor here at the NHC. I can also see ahead of us uh, daffodils. <laughs> I mean, spring's on the way. It is. Uh, so we had a question um, asking the difference between level one to a level four. Um, so in terms of levels, so all learners would start the basics. So the, the foundation course is the level one diploma. Um, and then we have the level two, level three and level four apprenticeships. You'd have to work your way up through, um, up through the apprenticeships. So once you've completed level two, you can then apply for level three. Um, and the same for level four, if you've successfully completed level three. So you can see in here that the non-riders um, are lunging. So this is a, a good opportunity for non-riders to work with horses from the ground. Um, so they're still working them, exercising them. Um, lunging is a good exercise. 
that a lot of racing yards use, whether it's for youngsters, um, bring the horse out of work that's had an injury, um, and it's good for monitoring how a horse works from the ground as well, if they have had an injury. And it just allows the um, the handler to to understand how horses, you know, how they work, um, and it's a really good skill to have when they head out into the workplace. So our instructor here, senior instructor Claire, um, actually started her career at the National Horse Racing College. Um, I won't say how many years ago, but uh, it was quite a few years ago. Uh, and Claire was also uh, a female well, apprentice uh, jockey, one of the first girls in racing to hold uh, an apprentice jockey license. Um, her son is a jockey um, and, uh, and her husband was a jockey as well. He's retired uh, from race riding now. Um, but Claire's worked here I believe it's 10 years now just over mm, 10 years yeah. so a very long time but her entire working life has been spent um working in racing her, her father was a racehorse trainer and uh yeah so her family is steeped in racing history so what claire you know doesn't know probably isn't worth knowing in all honesty <laughs> she's probably forgotten more than a lot of people ever know um so it, she's a real asset to the to the college and as well as you know a lot of our other instructors the majority of them have you know if they've race ridden or uh, worked in racing alone the the skills and knowledge behind all of them um, is so vast that the learners here have you know the best the best start learning from those that have they've been there and done that um, worked in racing yards ridden um, I don't I think most of most of our instructors have here. How did you find that? Good. Have you lunged before? No, I have not. That was your first experience? Yeah. yeah. So the little pony that uh, you've got in front of us here, um, where Claire is with the red jacket, he's one of our racing ponies, so we use him for, for pony racing. Uh, he's been in our pony racing academy and, uh, and, and our younger learners have ridden on the racetrack on him uh, in pony races. Although he thinks he's a 17-hand horse, isn't he? Yeah, he thinks he's a thoroughbred. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a super asset to the college. He does go on the gallops, and he's ridden by uh, lots of different riders. Um, and he's, yeah, despite his, uh, his, his being small in stature, he uh, does think he is a thoroughbred. <laughs> <laughs> we have two racing ponies here at the moment, and, uh, and they are both uh, exercised six days a week, like, like the thoroughbreds. Uh, and they really do um, have a, a big part to play in the college and, and teaching our learners. So just touching on, um, you know, Charlie being a racing pony, there is opportunities for, um, you know, for the children to get involved in, in pony racing as well. So we do have pony racing camps, pony racing training days, um, that those aged... 10, 10, 10 11. Yeah, 10, 11. Um, up to um, 15. So if, if you're of that age and you're watching and it's something that, you know, you're keen to do, have a look on our website for the, the dates that we have um, for the pony racing camps and training days. Um, if you have your own pony, you know, that's that's preferred, bring that along. Um, and you have a go on the gallops, um, you ride in the indoor, ride on the racing simulators. Obviously, as soon as COVID's, the restrictions are, are off and we're, we're back to a little bit more normality, um, then they, the, camp, the camps and training days will recommence. So yeah, if, if you're aged um, between 10 and, and 15 and pony racing is something that you'd be interested in, um, take a look on our website for the dates that um, that we have on there and, and also what's involved in the pony racing training days and camps. So hopefully we'll be able to catch up with Claire in a second. We're out to catch you in a second, Claire, when you've done that, please. Yes, that's Is that all right? Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. So as Claire just mentioned there, they're, they're actually going to um, long rein 
chatty man now which is where you use two lunge lines um, and you walk behind the horse so you'll see in a second how it's demonstrated but it's another skill that's really good to have especially for uh, for working youngsters um, a skill that you can take to a racing yard um, is you know is very much preferred um, so as, as, you know, if you learn the skills whilst you're here of lunging and long reining um, then it'll send, definitely send you in good stead for for working with a lot more youngsters and variety of horses in it in a working racing yard. So as we saw on the gallops earlier, um, of the, the learners using their voice to slow horses down, um, quicken them up and just relax horses in general. So this is where the voice come in, comes in as well, um, which is really beneficial whilst lunging, long reining. Um, the thoroughbreds are used to from being youngsters, from, um, you know, from being backed, this is what they're used to. So it's really important that learners understand how to use their voice. Um, to work with horses from the ground. Um, so Claire, can you just explain to us why, you know, why this is so important for the non-riders to have these skills? So in a racing yard, a huge part of preparing horses to become race horses eventually yeah. is the breaking in. So it's really important that they learn how to long rein and lunge them on the ground. Um, it's something that is done in, in pre-training yards and racing yards. Yeah. And they spend a lot of time walking miles with them and educating them with the stalls eventually. And yeah. um, you know, it, it's, it's part of the racehorse, it's part of the learning process. Yeah. And it is for the learners and it gives them the confidence to work on the ground with, with the racehorses. You know, as they've chose the non-riding pathway, they still need all these skills so that they can do, you know, other jobs in the industry that are equally as important as riding them. Yeah, so exactly. It's a huge, you know, and we're so lucky to have these two that are great. We have mm. got some others that are a little bit livelier that we're going to do later. And okay. Start introducing them. Yeah. But um, the pony's brilliant because he's he knows exactly what he's doing. Yeah. The chatty man doesn't seem to mind. <laughs> the first time he's had the reins round him since he was two years old. I've been oh, about 18 now, so Not phased at all. That's the first time he's ever had it done. He's never had that done by <laughs> So obviously progressing them onto those that are a little bit more keen will um you know prepare them for working with younger horses yeah. and um you know those that are being broken. Yeah. Um so it is good to as riding as you start them on the you know the lower graded horses working from the floor as well you yeah, know start them lower yeah you can't it, it would the horses would get loose if they got a real fresh one or a yeah monster that we knew was, or a horse that we knew was awkward it wouldn't build their confidence working with that they need yeah. to learn the skills learn how to lunge with two reins on both reins yeah. turn the horse set them off on their own these are all skills they need to learn over time which you know, he is the starting point 
Yeah, exactly. So for for non-riders, you know, a lot of people think, well, it must just be mucking out and, um, you know, yard work. But this is a, a good opportunity for them to work, you know, work with horses from the ground. So what other things would non-riders do whilst they're here for the 12 weeks? So the non-riders get um, taught how to pull manes, so they learn pulling manes. They do extra with their plaiting, so that yeah. when they do go on work placement, they've got a good potential, a good chance of going racing, uh, to, you know, taking the horses to the races. Yeah, exactly. They do the fitting of like paddock clothing, um, bandaging, they do any, if the horses have got ailments that need treating, we encourage the non-riders to be there when the vet's diagnosing things yeah. and then learning how to treat them. Uh, so it's varied. I mean, they do also, they'll check the field horses, they'll do a lot of the turning out, a lot of the bringing in. So, you know, the non-riders role it is quite a varied role, but that's what it's like in a in a racing yard. Yeah, you're exactly. on the ground and you're doing you're you're basically picking up lots of different jobs. So you're learning in lots of different areas. Mm. You know, the, especially like the horse health. If you've got riders riding out, then you you know the non-riders are the ones that will pick that up. So they need to have that knowledge. Exactly. Yeah. So there is a knowledge, a lot of knowledge yeah, there behind to, that they need. Yeah, how to care for them and. So if you know, it's some people are really interested in the you know anatomy and veterinary side of yeah. of the horse, and you know it's a it's a good opportunity to learn it. Yeah, exactly. Right so the here. the non riders, you know, the jobs that are in the racing industry for non riders are are just as important as ones that are exercising the horses every day, ready oh, for definitely, racing. Definitely, yes, absolutely. And you know, to be a good all rounder is, you know, you you're invaluable in a yard. It's something that you need somebody that is able to pick up the veterinary put a horse on the walker you can yeah trust them to liaise with the vet liaise with the farrier right exactly notes yeah. up, you know because the trainer can't and the head lads they can't be there all the time yeah so they, they rely you know they are relied on a lot yeah exactly perfect well thank you very much for that and we'll let you get back to them okay thank you <laughs> Right, so now we'll head back to um, to the site and just show you a bit around the facilities that are here, um, including the the canteen, um, the rec room, and a few other bits and bobs. We've got the simulator room as well, so the racing simulators. We'll have a demonstration shortly from a few of the learners. Um, we'll chat to one of our training instructors, Lee, about um, about the importance of them importance of fitness um, so if anyone has any questions about what's going around please do ask away um, and we'll we'll do our best to answer them live for you I think we've had a question about 14 16 program okay so we can have a chat about 14 16 program then um, so the 14 16 program is um, a program that we run and it's uh, it's basically a day release from school during term times so for those that are interested in uh, working towards the level one diploma um, in racehorse care, which is a foundation course. That's a good option for those that live uh, locally or those that can commute to the National Horse Racing College once a week. So if, um, if that's something that you're interested in, then have a chat with your school because they're the ones that will have to agree to that and they're the ones that will actually fund, um, fund the course whilst you're here. And once the, that course is successfully completed, so, um, so it's a two year, 14 to 16, um, the qualification will actually go towards the um, foundation course qualification as well. So you'll be gaining your skills and knowledge throughout the two years that you're here once a week, um, and that qualification will go towards the foundation course. So, like I say, if anybody's interested in the 1416 program, um, please head over to our website and the all the information's on there and how you can get in touch with your school. Um, obviously, the school does need to approve it before you start the 1416 program. Um, but during the the 1416 program, you'll actually cover everything that is covered in the 
usual foundation course so um, you know you'll get the opportunity to ride you'll get the opportunity to muck out look after the horses daily um, understand the racing industry um, and just daily what the foundation course learners will do um, you know you'll just do that once a week and, and generally learn from there so we'll just watch these learners heading back that have been lunging So a few of these learners that are here will be the ones that are likely to give us the um, racing simulator demonstration. So once their horses have, have been put away um, and the horses are all settled in their stables, um, then we'll be able to head over to the racing simulator room. So you can see one learner there which has got a gilet on that says on track for racing so we have various awards as well during the foundation course so we have a student of the week award and on track for racing award so student of the week is selected by our training instructors um, and that's you know a really good award to receive during your course and we also have the on track for racing which means that you know you're showing dedication and commitment during the course um, and that uh, you know really progressing and that the training instructors are Just aware of what you're doing so we're now going to head over to the indoor arena which is where some of the learners are at the moment that they're riding so the learners in the indoor are uh, what we call junior learners so they're on week three of the foundation course um, so they're learning to, uh, to canter at the moment. So a lot of these guys hadn't ridden before they arrived here three weeks ago. So you shall see their progress. Yes. So talking of juniors and seniors, um, if, if those watching aren't familiar with, with that. So in the first six weeks of your course, you're actually a junior. And in the remaining six weeks, you're a senior. So if you're wondering what junior and senior means, that's that. Stay out, you're okay. <laughs> You're on Facebook Live now. <laughs> So we touched on earlier what the course is um, is available for, so anybody age 16 and over. Um, so we don't have an age limit at all. You know, we have a, a wide range of, of ages that will complete the foundation course. Um, you know, from those that are 16 out of school, that you know, they've got the heart set on a career in the racing industry through to we've had those that are over the age of 60 that want to work with horses from the ground. Um, you know, there's a wide variety of, of ages that that can complete the foundation course. And we have quite a lot of those in you know, early 20s that are looking for a career change that you know, think the career that they're in at the minute isn't for them. Um, so they come and complete the foundation course, head out into work placement, gain full-time employment with a racehorse trailer, and they've never looked back. So if you're watching this and you think, oh, maybe I'm too old, um, not at all. So just you know, give it a go. And if it's something that you'd really think you'd enjoy, then just apply online and, yeah, like I say, give it a go. So we're just going to wait a second before we go into the indoor, just because there's somebody cantering. Uh, we don't want to spook the horses. So just a little bit about the indoor arena. Um, obviously we'll go in in a second. 
So this is where the initial assessment will take place. So when learners arrive on a Sunday, um, the Tuesdays is the first time they'll get to ride. So they'll all have a chance to ride in here regardless of previous experience. And this is where the training instructors will just take notes on um, where they think your ability's at, your riding skills, just so they know um, what horses would be suitable for you um, and one direction that they need to they need to teach you and able to uh, you know get the best out of each individual. So it won't be long until we can head in there. So the learners actually ride the first lot in the indoor arena every day as well. So this is used every day for learners. Um, the only day it's not used is a Sunday. So none of the horses are ridden on a Sunday. Um, and Saturday, the learners will only ride in the indoor. So like I said, first lot, Monday to Friday is in the indoor. Saturday morning, indoor only. And Sunday, horses not ridden at all. So as it would be in a, a racing yard, um, most race horses aren't ridden on a Sunday unless they're racing early on the following week. Um, so it just replicates a racing yard as the uh, as the routine would be. So we've got to go ahead now to go in. Like I say we don't want to spook any horses whilst we're heading on in. Thank you. So as you can see, the indoor arena is a big spacious area. So it's ideal for, for bigger groups as well. So this is a relatively big group. Um, so it's ideal for those that are working in big groups. And it's a nice, say, safe environment as well for the riders. So we'll be able to catch up with Lee shortly, hopefully, and um, have a chat with him. But first, we'll just watch this learn to canter around.
let him fall into the cantaria so we've got a nice yeah. and collective and if you don't pop out of collective your whole yeah. ride's going to be good Ooh. okay Ooh. here we go let's bring back in the round who have we got next Mia let's go are you putting spirit fixing to your home ready for your light suit that's about right mate remember what you're doing exactly the same as you did before but I would have a slightly shorter contact with your reins, so when you make that transition, you can get straight out of the saddle. And remember, heel down, lower leg forward, and keep your hands down here, yeah? Everything exactly the same as you before. Lee, can we just catch you quickly, just before uh, Mia sets off? Yeah. So where are these guys at at the minute, and what are you kind of looking for in them? They've just made the transition from sitting counter. We've already okay. done a sitting counter, and now they're getting into their light seat, okay. which is the intermediate stage before they go up into the standing jockey position. Yeah. So this is just getting them comfortable and familiar with standing up in the stirrups and getting the balance that way. Yeah, building okay. their strength. Yeah. Okay, and Liam, how, how was that for you? Exactly the same. So, so you've been here three weeks. Yeah. And um, what riding experience did you have before you arrived here? Like not, not in racing industry before, so just general practice horses and just general yards and stuff like that. Yeah. And, uh, for anything, not for anything, just general horses okay. really. So could you walk Trot and Canter before yeah, you arrived here? Yeah, I could walk here? Trot and Canter, but that was 12, 12 13 years ago. Okay. Then, I've never sat on back on horse again. So okay, so it is like starting again from scratch yeah. and learning the racing style. It's like riding a bike, as you say, once you get going again. Yeah, again, it comes back to you, of course, yeah. yeah. Getting and onto the higher level horses, it's, it's a bit better. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And how are you finding the course? Great, it's amazing. I don't know why I didn't stick at it 10 years ago. Okay. Do you mind if I ask, how old are you, Leon? I'm 27. You're 27? So you're still a young man. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I wish I was 27 again, Leon. So, so what, what's the ambition? Where Where do you see this course taking? Be a jockey, yeah? Okay. Yeah, just thought we'd finally get back into it. Okay. And what's been the hardest part of this course for you so far? Being away from a little boy. Yeah, you've got a family, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. The 12 weeks will go fast and, uh, yeah. And obviously because of COVID at the moment, we're not allowed to have uh, anybody on site. So it makes it a bit more tricky, doesn't it, to see uh, family and, uh, yeah. I mean, FaceTime and that's yeah. obviously a great way to keep in touch. Of so course. We've done that every night, yeah. Yeah. every so often. Yeah. So, but yeah, other than that, I'm it. And what's it like living here? Yeah, it's all right. Obviously, I you're a little bit older. Ponds, but I mean, yeah. I, I've got my own room, so yeah. not like some of the people here that are sharing, but I mean, I have my own personal space. We yeah. have the rec room. Yeah. Uh, just, just, yeah, I think it's quite good, really. And, and your fitness, how fit were you on arrival? Could you have been fitter? Uh, I, well, before coming, I did start running and jogging and stuff yeah. like that, so my fitness is quite good to be fair. Yeah. So, yeah, it's improving while I'm here. Obviously, out of breath after that, but hopefully, once we get out of them gallops, it will improve a lot, lot more. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's increasing every day your fitness yeah. and improving, and that will help you move yeah. forward with your riding. Yeah, Leon, thank you. Thank you for sharing yeah, that with us. Thank you. <laughs> So uh, Lee, our instructor here, um, his background, um, he's been a jockey, uh, he's ridden on the flat and he's ridden over as a jump jockey uh, and he's also been an assistant racehorse trainer and he's worked in America for a number of years. Um, he's come back to the UK, he's got a young family himself and uh, wants to raise his family in the UK and back, back near home where his family are. Um, but Lee has lots of experience um, of, of riding himself, does still ride out here for us. Um, yeah, and he's imparting all of his knowledge on, on our, young, uh, our young learners here. So we've got Harry here with us, and uh, Harry, you're in week three of the foundation yeah. course. Yeah. How are you finding it? Yeah, it's good. You know, good days and bad days, but you better approach. You know what I mean, but it's yeah. a joy, would be fair. Uh, what, what experience did you have of, of riding before you came well, here? I didn't have any riding experience, really. None Very whatsoever. Yeah, that's why I'm here. I did the national stud course, 
for six months then and did diploma, so that's all like stud work and poles, but I always wanted to be riding. I used to drive past the heap every day to work. Yeah. And you see them go out and you're like, right, I want to be there. Okay. I'll be doing that and that's why the NHC is so good. Yeah. Like, got your dreams there, you? yeah. So where's home for you? Uh, Southampton, near like Winchester really. Okay. Southampton, there's not many people there right here. <laughs> so you're a long way from home then up here in South yeah. Yorkshire. And um, have you been homesick at all? No, nah, not really. No. I don't mind being away because you're doing something every day, aren't you? Yeah, so yeah. That's so good, yeah. And what's the, the, the dream long term? Where do you see yourself yeah. going and racing? Work rider and then yeah. see what happens, see what opportunities arise. I don't yeah. really want to set my sights for anything in case I'm disappointed but yeah. there's so many avenues in this I could always go back to stud work if it doesn't work out but absolutely that's it you've got your diploma from the national yeah. stud so you've got uh, lots of avenues you can yeah, explore um, but how are you finding the ride have you fallen off yet no I'm not, I'm not falling off <laughs> not yet <laughs> I've had some bad days but today I'm not doing it that well with this fellow but that's up, we'll go again, do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's part and parcel of, of learning, isn't it? Exactly. It doesn't matter whether you're learning to ride a horse or, or what you're learning. Exactly. Yeah, you'll have good it. and bad days. Bring yourself back up and go again, that's it. It's the bad days that make you very good yeah, at what you do. It makes you stronger. It does, it. exactly, yeah, yeah. So uh, so how's how's your fitness as well? How yeah, are you finding uh, I find, I find it's quite good Because you've obviously done the, yeah, the so diploma every day, course like, and you're at the work at Mackey, I used to muck out yeah. a lot, but like every day fit from before yeah, I get started running a lot, so yeah. I think I would advise Get running before and don't just come on a clean slate with no running. It will catch up with you and you'll think, it's not this, it's not the route. <laughs> yeah, definitely start again. Yeah, so as fit as you can be, yeah. and it'll make life a lot easier. Definitely. Even the yard work, definitely. everything will be yeah. easier. Yeah. Exactly, you'll, you'll just find it so much more smooth. Otherwise, you'll be all over the place, you'll be off. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> and it's how are you finding the long days? Because obviously, you start early in the morning. Um, long days, it keeps you, keeps you busy. That's yeah. the sickest thing about it. Because you're busy, you're not thinking about anything else. You're, you're very much into it. Like, of course, you're, you're drilled, like, you're in a working mindset. Yeah. So you need to do it, isn't it? Yeah. You need to build up. So, I think that's a really good thing. Yeah. Well, that's it. We're preparing you for going into you yeah. know, the, the workplace, and the days will be long in a racing yard. And, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's it. And then when you get to the racing yard, it will feel amazing being yeah. out in the open and yeah. free. Like, yeah. Going to the race and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to what the future brings. Yeah, and one last question for you, Harry. What's the food like here? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah? It's pretty good, yeah. Because you're a slim trap, yeah. so you get fed plenty? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I like to think I don't put too much on. We'll see you in a week's time. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, yeah. no, but you, you're eating side. well. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm well and, and if somebody was a little bit fussy with their food, would they uh, be catered yeah, for very well? Yeah. yeah. They've got options. So there's three options, and I think you can speak to the chef. If you want yeah. It is good, they do, do look after you well. Yeah. You don't go hungry. No, no. So if, if you like food, come here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Harry, thank you very, very much for that. I appreciate that. So what week are you in of your course now, Anton? Week three of the course, yeah? And you've come from a racing yard. Yeah, I was Ed Dunlop's. Ed Dunlop's, okay, so down in Newmarket. Okay, up from Newmarket. <laughs> and, and how are you finding the course? Yeah, it's great. There's okay. You're of course learning to ride because you've worked as a, a yard person yeah. in a racing yard, but you hadn't got any riding experience. Yeah, so. I only, only rode when I was little. So yeah. I was, but I barely remember it, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. So how have you fallen off yet? No. 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 Cracky me, you're doing very well. Week three, you've not fallen <laughs> off yet. We'll have yeah. to uh, change out. <laughs> so, uh, so what's been the, the best part of the course for you so far? Is it the learning to ride? Yeah. yeah. It's the standard camp, and that's the best bit. Yeah. And what are you looking forward to? Uh, basically, just going back into the work garden. Okay. Yeah. Because okay, because so, Newmarket is that area is home for you, isn't it? Yeah. 
So, um, so yeah, heading back towards Newmarket and uh, yeah, but go back as a rider. You came here as a non-rider, you're going to return as a rider. Yeah. Okie dokie. Well, I watched you last week and uh, and you were on the lunge last yeah. week. You've improved massively. Yeah, I'm doing it um, by myself now. You are doing it by yourself yeah. now, yeah. So that's a massive that's achievement. I'm the sitting time now to yeah. the rising. Yeah. 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 Sometimes it's frustrating because you want to move further forward quicker than you are yeah, moving. Yeah. Well, well, we'll pop back and see you, obviously. Uh, in, in a month's time, we'll have another Facebook uh, virtual open morning. So you'll be sort of four weeks further on at that point. Um, so you'll be sort of, yeah, on the gallops and yeah. marvellous. Thank you for sharing that with us. Good luck. Right, so we're going to head out now. Um, we'll head back to the main site. So you can kind of get an idea of what, um, you know, what the learners do here in the indoor arena. Um, these guys are in week three. Um, so it just gives you a bit of an idea of what they're, what they're doing. Um, as you can see, they do count around individually. So it is very much one-to-one -one learning in, in the sense that you are in a group, but you're still having that one-to-one -one tuition from the um, from the training instructors, just to make sure um, you're progressing, progressing well, um, riding correctly, correct position. You know, got your balance right, um, and really bonding with the horses that you're riding. So, um, so that's what we can see in there. So we're now heading back to the main site where we'll have a look uh, through some of the facilities, which is what we were going to do earlier, but um, thankfully we got the chance to go in the indoor arena um, with the guys that were riding then. So now we're just going to head back to the, to the main site. Um, we'll also get to, to watch the racing simulator demo. So those that have um, never been to the NHC or not sure where the NHC is located, we're just on the outskirts of Doncaster. Um, obviously there's a few racing things in Doncaster with the, the race course and the, the bloodstock sales there. Um, and we're just on the outskirts, um, actually located on the site of Rosington Hall. So it's a beautiful area to be located at, um, but still very accessible uh, with the A1 M18 uh, within a few miles distance. So it's very accessible for all. So there's a few questions here. There's a question from Jasmine um, that you asked a while ago. Sorry, we couldn't answer that whilst we're in the indoor. Um, 
So because of COVID, we're still allowed to go home every the weekend. So at the moment, because COVID restrictions um, and the fact that we are on a national lockdown, once the learners arrive for the 12 week course, they have to stay on site for the full 12 weeks. Um, so every learner is COVID tested on the day that they arrive. Um, and presuming a negative test, the learners will still have to um, kind of socially distance for 10 days, the first 10 days here at the college. Um, and once that 10 days is clear, then they can um, go back to um, sharing rooms if they wish, um, you know, sit next to each other and just socialise together. So once COVID restrictions are lifted and everything is back to normal, and then learners can go home every other weekend. So we're just going to head in the main site, pop face masks on. So this is the main reception area. As you can see at the moment, every visitor has to have temperature check um, just to make sure that that's all correct. Um, and we'll head up to what we call the rec room, the recreational room, which is where the learners can spend a lot of their downtime throughout the day. that's actually in here so like I say this is the rec room um, an area for the learners to just relax during the free times and evenings uh, we have a TV over there and we have Netflix for those that can't miss some of the series we can catch up with them on an evening uh, pool table and a few exercise uh, equipment over there um, a lot of the learners do use the exercise equipment in an evening just to up their fitness a little bit whilst they're here. Um, we also have in here a tuck shop which is open every evening um, so learners can purchase any essential items that they need, toiletries etc um, and also sells any sweets and snacks that they may, they may like as well whilst they're here. So this is the rec room. So we'll just head down now to the canteen. So everywhere at the minute is a one-way system due to COVID. So this is the canteen in here. This is where the learners will have their three meals a day. Uh, and the meals are made by these very dedicated people. So this is where the meals are served in here. We have hot and cold options uh, for every meal and there are three different options as well. And um, when we spoke to Harry earlier uh, about the food, where if you do have any um, intolerances or any preferences on food, just let our chefs know whilst you're here or just before you arrive and we'll be able to sort that out for you, no problem. So here's a little bit of an idea of the meals that you can have whilst you're here. So there's a wide range of different um, options. Uh, that's breakfast, lunch and evening meal. Tea, coffee, cold drinks and fruit is available 24 seven as well. So we'll just head back out now. We'll head over to the tap room. Um, we'll just have a look in there. So as you can see, it's quite um, quite an old building around here. We've been on the the um, the grounds of Rosington Hall, so there's quite a lot of, quite a lot of history here. Um, we spoke earlier about the accommodation, so unfortunately we can't actually go in the accommodation at the minute due to um, the health and safety of the learners during COVID times. Obviously they're all safe here on site, um, having been tested and um, you know they're isolating as such. So we won't be going into the accommodation today, um, but you can look back on previous open mornings where we have visited the accommodation block that's available on Facebook and YouTube. I believe it's back in April 
or May of 2020. So accommodation block here. Um, so the girls landing is on the first floor and the boys landing is on the top floor. Um, so they have to stick to their landings. Anyone found on each other's landing um, equals uh, some, you know, not bad news for, for the learners. So basically don't, don't go on each other's landing. So there we go. So there's the accommodation up there. So now we'll head into the uh, the tap room and an area where the learners have certain roles and responsibilities to do. So whilst the learners are here, each learner will be given a role and responsibility. Um, and one of them roles is to clean and dry all the saddlecloths. So as you can see here, they've all been cleaned and dried and put back. Um, and one of the roles, responsibilities for one of the learners is to do that. And I think they've done quite a, a good job so far today. All very tidy in here. And then we'll head into here, which is the tack room. So obviously a lot of the tack is out on the horses at the moment. So it looks a little bit bare, um, but you can see that every horse has its own saddle and bridle. Um, just to give you an idea of what the saddle looks like up close. Let's use this one here. So this is stands. Um, so this is Stan's bridle. So most bridles are quite, um, you know, standard as to what they wear. Slightly different bit for this horse, but most of them would wear a snaffle. Um, a lot that you see in racing is the uh, the breast girth. And here's the saddle that you'd expect to see in racing. So this is an exercise saddle. Um, it's what you call a half tree saddle. So it's actually quite bendy when you when it's you know, on, on here. Um, and these are safety stirrups. So as you can see, the bend in them stirrups. Um, these are what you call safety stirrups. So there's less likely for a learner to get their you know their foot stuck in there um, and to cause an incident. So that's what a saddle looks like. So we'll pop that back on stands. Peg there. So yeah, like I say, all horses have their own pegs. Um, and learners, as they're here as well, will also understand how to clean tack correctly, take the bridle apart, and put it back together. Um, so that's always something that's um, you know key when you're working in racing is to look after all the gear, look after the tack. So that's the tack room. So we're going to head over to the racing simulator room now um, and just whilst we're heading there I'll just chat about the, house, the horses that are normally housed up here. So um, for those that may have been to the NHC many years ago may recognise this area um, as where some of the horses were housed but we actually have um, the Doncaster Equine College horses are housed up here now. So. For those watching that would like to work with horses, um, but you're not sure if you want to work with race horses or not, we do have Doncaster, Doncaster Equine College um, for those that want to gain experience um, and knowledge working with horses in general. So we'll head into the racing simulator room. So we'll be having a, a demo with a couple of the learners. So guys, Shake your hand and put yourself into a normal position. Okay. 
Lee, can we just um, chat quick about, um, so in terms of fitness, these obviously are a great source of fitness for learners. Yeah. Um, so the guys that were doing that then, so what are you looking for at the minute in, in terms of you know, their ability when they're on these? I think 
think it's just the process of going stage by stage. When they first come in, the legs wouldn't have stood being on this horse and standing yeah. pants for more than 20 seconds. Yeah. So they're obviously halfway, the four ones that coming up to the, they've done three weeks now and the other group have done eight weeks. So yeah. their fitness levels really improve. And then we can give them new techniques to learn when yeah. they get stronger and the legs are able to take it. So yeah. start the run a little bit longer, a little bit deeper in the saddle. Yeah. Uh, and their legs can take that. And now they're getting stronger from having run shorter and actually getting to a jockey position. Mm. And uh, their muscles are able to stand it. Yeah. They're working on their fitness. They have cardio lessons twice a week and obviously they're riding the horses every day. Mm. And they're coming in here most mornings yeah. uh, for a practice session. And they will actually have lectures on the simulator maybe once, twice a week as well. Yeah, so it all kind of goes towards their fitness and it's building their fitness. It's all coming from their core fitness. They get told their basic position, which we've got here, it's kind of the martini glass position, that's what they're looking for. Yeah. Which is like we said, a little bit of weight in the heel, the low leg forward, a bend in the knee, they're pushing their bottom back, and then a flat back. That's your jockey position, that's your martini glass position, that's what everyone's aiming for. Yeah. And then we've got to teach them... Uh, when the horse is taking a pull, how to react to that, mm -hmm. which is more weight through the stirrups, yeah. heels down, and pivoting against them. The yeah. yeah. And then the same, the same way, we're also telling when the horse is relaxed and switched off, they can relax, keep breathing, keep yeah. the horse a breather. Yeah. And like I say, with them, uh, that core fitness brings them better balance, mm. and their ability then to ride horses of uh, varying degrees when they get tougher and stronger, they're yeah. fitter to deal with it. Yeah. But what it is, it's a gradual process. And yeah. Just building their fitness up. And some of them get, it happens quicker. Yeah. Actually. And some it takes a bit more time. But each individual has their own set of progression mm. and will move them on to the individual. Yeah, exactly. And they come along during the course. So and those so that are, have started the course, so they have no experience with the horse whatsoever. So these are beneficial for them to, you know, understand how to hold the reins, uh, how exactly. to, you know, a basic position before they then head out riding. Their first day will be spent in here and we'll drop the stirrups and we'll yeah. show them how to use the reins because obviously everything's about safety. Yeah. How important is having safety first. Yeah. And um, nothing's going to happen here. Yeah. So it's a perfect place to start everybody off. So everybody becomes familiar with the tap they're using, yeah. where they're sitting in the saddle, how they sit in the saddle, because some people don't even know if they put the bum on the front of it, the pommel or the canter <laughs> yeah, the back yeah. of it. Yeah. So they've got to learn where they put themselves. They have to learn where the feet are going to be, yeah. the safest position. Yeah. Uh, we instruct all that. And how they hold the reins, because mm. some guys are coming with experience of riding uh, show ponies, riding horses, yeah. show jumpers, and they'll tend to have split reins. Yeah, on the exactly. Top. So we've got to re-educate those guys. Mm. Sometimes it's easy for people that have never ridden before. Yeah. So we're teaching them how to hold the reins as you would. Yeah, basically. no old habits, is it? Which is your double bridge or a single bridge, but it's a stability hold. Yeah. So everything coming through the reins is a more stable fix. Mm. It's geared up for when they're cantering so they get yeah. a better hold of their yeah. horse. Yeah, so exactly. I taught that from the beginning as well. So you right to give us a... Yeah, exactly. Can you give us a quick demo on the reins then, how you'd expect them to hold? Um, so obviously a lot of people that are watching this may have, like you say, have ridden the generic way of riding or never yeah, ridden so at all. The first way you're taught to ride, riding school ponies, or yeah. riding longer, um, yeah. you have split reins and you have your thumbs on top. Yeah. And that's the way people tend to be taught when they first ride. Yeah. Uh, here, what we're asking them to do is have a double bridge, which is putting both reins together so you've got an equal pressure hold. It's ideal for your cantering. Now, what the difference is, there's a split rein technique, yeah. which we would still use on yearlings mm. and breaking and schooling young yeah. thoroughbreds, but when they're cantering, it's like this. You put the two together, and that's called a double bridge, yeah. and that's a single bridge. Exactly the same, but yeah. there's less. For someone with smaller hands, mm -hmm. uh, it's less of a kerfuffle, it's less yeah. uh, equipment in the hands. Okay. But we're teaching them to do the double bridge if they can hold them like that, and if not, it's like that. It has the same effect, it's yeah. exactly the same effect, it's just less to hold. So people look like I said with smaller hands, it's a little bit easier for them. Yeah. And we, we're trying to aim that they get thumbs width between them so your bridge can go over the horse's neck. So when yeah. the horse is settled, you can relax them on the neck, yeah, and if right. it's pulling, you can use them pull against themselves so yeah. you're not because you've got to remember these are uh, half a ton of 
animal. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and we're a lot smaller than they are. Yeah. So our technique has got to be more than our power and strength. It's yeah. more about technique than anything. Yeah, exactly. And that's what we're taught from here. Yeah. And uh, Perfect. they get to uh, see that in reality and practice. And yeah. they learn how to develop techniques for yeah. different category of horses. So yeah. They learn from them. That's great. Thank you very much for that demo and thanks for chatting to us. Right, so that concludes um, today's open morning. So we've gone over by a few minutes, but hopefully everybody that's, um, that's joined us today um, found out wealth of information about the foundation course, um, about the facilities here at the NHC. Um, but if anybody has any other questions at all that they wish to ask after this event, um, there's numerous ways you can contact us um, and just please ask as many questions as you wish. Those that, um, that registered online for this open morning, um, you'll shortly receive a, an email just highlighting a bit more information about the course. Um, how to apply, etc. So if you didn't register and you wish to receive that email, um, please let us know as soon as this event is finished, either in the comments or um, or direct messages on Facebook, and we can send that over to you. No problem at all. So thank you, everybody, for joining us, and um, hopefully we'll see you all very soon.